This edition of the Riddler Report is brought to you by Blockchain.com. Um, 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 um. I do believe that this is a uh, a right of free speech. I think that case law would back me up on this. Maybe it will. I'll call the police and we'll find out. Don't videotape me. Yeah, I have nothing to say about the system because I don't think that people typically will ever get um, any justice out of the system. And so I think that a lot of people up here, if not all of us, um, encourage us uh, encourage finding different ways to get justice. And maybe for you, that doesn't mean that you know you ever you know are made whole in your situation, but you can go out and expose what they're doing, uh, support other people who are exposing what they're doing, embarrassing for their embarrassing them for their tactics. And in a roundabout way, that's your way of finding justice. Yeah, every single time we've spoken out about an incident like the Chalk the Police or Mississippi, and every time we're highlighting these cases that happen against us, other people come out of the woodwork. Like five years ago, that same officer did this to me, or this new officer in this area is doing that. And like I spoke out because you spoke out. And so. You know, you, if you share your story even just on a Facebook post, you never know if another one of your friends would say, that happened to me and this happened to me, and you can start building like a timeline or be more effective in the future of, you know, oh, well, that happened to me, camera, or, you know, something like that. You know, I'd get, I'd, get, I'd honestly even, because I'm not worried about changing the system, but I, I will submit a request just to get the contradiction to lies and be able to highlight that, you know what I mean, or show it, so... Yeah, there's definitely value in that. Like, if they, even if you file a freedom of information request, which would probably be what you'd have to do, uh, they deny it maybe for some reason, but you could show the lack of accountability even within their own rules of not wanting to share the, the transparent information. You know, Even though they filmed you, they're not going to give you the video. I think part of eroding the police state is convincing people that the police state doesn't give a damn about you and there's no way to get justice through it. And so why even support the system at all? I don't want to, I don't want to reduce the police state to a you know, comfortable level. I want to get rid of it because at no point is it going to ever serve us. And primarily that's why I advocate at like a cop lock to say, you know, I don't, people say, how do you get police accountability? How do you get police accountability? And I'm like, well, you don't, not in this system ever at all. Not once will you ever have, you know, a true accountability and it won't be until the market allows us to have, you know, the government no more, no longer having a monopoly on protection. And so like once you can tell the, you know, New Hampshire State Police that I'm going to fund your competitor and not you, you really won't get any accountability. You know, it's, it's just like any other business that I'm sure operates under, you know, market signals, but the police don't do that. Yeah, and, and again, to go back, like one example is like creating the parallel institutions, like creating, pr providing that good or service, you know, through voluntary interaction so if they if people want to be safe and whatever most folks do and they and they think they can't maybe handle themselves for whatever reason or they have a high risk occupation or whatever like they can contract that out and there could be different services set up so like if it's not aggressive we're going to come up with grow elbow we're going to stop in detroit met this dude named dale brown and he you know recognized you know what he saw was in the mid 90s like the Detroit PD, these folks who subsist on money taken from others under the claims of protecting them, of like never responding when called, and you know, you know, uh, just being apathetic and and not encouraging people to like take a more proactive self-defense or whatever approach. But so he he said he started with a rifle and a dog, and he started this company called the Threat Management Center. So it's sort of like the Guardian Angels monetized. So he he now has like a big facility, and he has. Um, 500 business clients. I, I've seen many security people wearing badges that say security on them. We just don't as a practice as an organization just to make sure that that button cannot be pushed. And a thousand homes that are like upscale and then with that extra revenue he's able to do a lot of volunteer stuff like they, he and his uh, folks used to ride with truckers that were getting truck jacked or whatever and or they stay with like ladies who uh some guy maybe was like making threats against they might stay with the lady with a rifle and sort of make sure nothing happens and you know things like that but a lot of just patrols and things but anyway so these are this is an example of this good being supplied voluntarily and it could be definitely done elsewhere and you know there's a lot of i don't know potential so we'll see where it goes blockchain.info's free bitcoin web wallet chock full of privacy and security features two-factor authentication, a second password for sending coins. They never have control over your passwords or your coins. 
They don't even require your personal info. Get yours today at blockchain.com. Um, 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 um.